Hi all, this is Jason Spear from the American Alpine Institute. I'm a split board guide and avalanche instructor here. Uh, today we're going to talk about CalTOPO, uh, how to navigate to a known area, base maps in CalTOPO, and some introduction to topo maps in general. Uh, we'll talk about how to add layers, uh, slope angle shading and how it relates to avalanche problems, dropping a waypoint, drawing a line, line statistics on the line that's drawn, exporting the line to a GPX file, and then printing the map that has that line on it for use in the field. For this lesson, we're gonna talk about caltopo.com, which is a website that is easy to get to and easy to use. You can sign in a couple of ways with a, a Caltopo account or with your Gmail account. And once you've signed in, you can, you can use that account to save your work, save your zones and your maps, um, so you can get to the same ones again later. Uh, this is caltopo.com. It's the, this great website with lots of good mapping resources available to you. If you enter the website up in your, your uh, address bar, if you haven't used it before, it's going to take you to a map of the US and you'll have to zoom in from there. If you have used it before, it will take you to the, the last perspective that you were using. You can sign in over here on the left. I've signed in with my Gmail account and that lets you uh, add layers to, to your sign in so that you can get back to it later or add lines, add objects, add zones uh, to start building out your catalog. In this next part, we'll talk about how to navigate to a known area using the search bar, coordinates that you know, or just zooming in on landmarks. How to navigate to a known area. Once you've zoomed in to the region that you wanna look at, you can do a couple things. You can type in the area that you wanna to go to and it'll take you pretty close to it. And from here, this gets us real close and easy to navigate. Um, you can zoom in on landmarks. In this map, it's pretty easy to spot where Mount Baker is. Um, it's also easy to spot bodies of water. So Baker Lake is easy to find and Shuxon is also easy to find. And I know we wanna be approximately between the two and a little bit north of that. So I can find my way to that area as well. And the last way that it's easy to navigate into an area is if you have some known coordinates, you could also enter those into that search bar as well. If, uh, if a friend gives you a waypoint or you, you've got a guidebook that gives you a waypoint to look for, you can navigate to that waypoint by typing the coordinates into the, the search bar. In this next part, we're gonna talk about the base map. I like to use the map builder topo, and then we'll have an introduction on topo maps. We'll talk about contour lines, both thick and thin, changes in contour lines as, as the zoom or the perspective changes on the online map, how to spot gullies and ridges on the topo map, how to spot high points, how to spot lakes, creeks, and rivers, and what some of the colors on the topo map indicate. Okay, here's, here's a topo map, and this is gonna look a lot like uh, your classic USGS green trails map. My preference is actually the map builder topo, which has a lot of nice detail in it. Uh, Cal topos built out trails and roads and, and bodies of water uh, and feature names, which are really handy to use. Um, if you're not familiar with the topo map, all of these lines that are on here are contour lines. Uh, any, any one of these light brown lines, if you were to travel along that line, you would maintain an elevation, you wouldn't gain or lose any elevation. And dispersed throughout these lines, you'll see the heavier lines that are a little easier to spot and a little easier to follow. If you zoom in, you'll find uh, elevation numbers on those heavier uh, contour lines that you can, you can use. Um, a couple of features on a topo map that you'll wanna learn to identify are gullies. Uh, if you look at a gully, the, the real key indicator on a gully is that uh, the point of the V is, is pointed uphill. And you can tell that when you, when you move the cursor across here, you can see in the upper right corner, the elevation is changing. Um, as I move down this gully, it's, it's moving down in elevation. And the other, another one that you wanna spot is ridges. If you, we look up here, the point on this V is pointing downhill in this case, and that indicates that it's a ridge. And then if you see a circular contour line like this one, uh, that indicates it's a high point or a summit. Um, some other things that you wanna be able to recognize are bodies of water, which show up in blue. We, we've got the blue lakes, and then in, running out of most of the lakes are gonna be the, the creeks and streams. Um, some of the bigger ones will show up as, as not just simple lines, but as, as more broad uh, water channels. And those are gonna be bigger rivers that you wanna to learn to navigate around. And then on the, the colors, 
the gray indicates areas that are not forested. And then the green colors are forests that are, are fairly thick and continuous. So you wanna to learn to, to recognize those and be able to watch out for them. Something to be aware of on the online topo maps is that as you change your zoom level, the contour lines will auto scale. And so you wanna you want to watch out for that because if you zoom out far enough, you're gonna lose that detail that indicates um, some of the slope angle based on, on contour lines. It's like changing the scale on a, on a paper map, but it changes quickly as you zoom in and out. Next, we'll talk about adding layers, uh, using satellite images, setting the transparency, and the, the ability to see trees, tree lines, meadows, and talus fields. Now we'll talk about adding layers. I really like to add a satellite image on top of that map builder topo. Uh, there are several to choose from, but they're all pretty good. Um, so I'll set that satellite image and then I'll turn the transparency down to approximately 50% so that I can see both the, the map builder topo and the satellite imagery. What this really lets me see is um, where the trees are, the distribution of trees and the tree line, um, talus fields, uh, meadows, and, and other, other features that are related to avalanche problems and, and just a fun day in the backcountry. Uh, one of my favorite ways to do this then is to add on top of the, the satellite image and the map builder topo, uh, add slope angle shading. And when I do that, I wanna make sure that it's a fixed angle shading. And if you look at this, you'll see that the, the lightest shading is, is this yellow shading and that's angles down to 27 degrees. Um, the prime avalanche angles are, are shaded in red, that's 35 to 45. And then you get into these darker colors as you get up, up into cliff bands and um, the, the purples and dark grays and blacks. Next, we'll talk about dropping a simple waypoint, just a, a set of coordinates and where that puts you on a map. Uh, we'll get a little more complicated with drawing a line, uh, naming the line and editing the line. And then we'll look at line statistics of how to use some information that you can get from that line as it lays on the land. Uh, elevation gain and loss, distance, tree cover, uh, aspect and slope angle. Sometimes it's nice to be able to drop a simple waypoint, just a, a marker where coordinates are. This might be where something happened. Uh, it might be a position that, that you got from a friend. You can do it just with a right click. Um, and, and then you add a, add a marker. And then down here, you can edit it. You can give it a name. You can say, this is where I dug a pit. Uh, you can save it for later um, and add that to your catalog of, of information. And then from there, uh, something that's a little more complicated that you wanna learn how to do is drawing a line. Same thing, right click, new, and line. And then I can follow this line out of, out of here. It'll start, where right, uh, it'll start where I click, follow this out. Maybe I wanna follow this trail here. We'll go around to, to here and then I'm gonna break off that summer trail and work my way up through here and across this and maybe I want to zoom in a little bit while I'm doing this and get right to Herman's saddle. Came up a little bit short on me. That's easy to fix. I can edit. That'll give me uh, these vertices that I can grab uh, if I want to adjust it around some features that I'm trying to, trying to work my way through. That's easy to do. And then I can give this uh, a name as well. I can call this the approach to, to Herman Saddle. I can adjust the color. We'll make that one blue for the up track. Uh, I can change the line weight so it stands out a little bit better. And I can zoom back out and take a look at my work. From here, if I want to know some statistics on this line, a little bit more about what I'm going to see when I travel, I can click on the line, go to terrain statistics, and this will show me that coming out of the, the trailhead, it dips down a little bit to the lake, and then it makes a pretty steady climb up to Herman Saddle. Uh, it looks like it's just shy of about two miles, and the total, uh, total gain or loss in this is going to be about 1,000 feet, 1,100 feet of gain. Um, 
If I look at the, the histogram for slope angle, I can see that I'm traveling mostly in low angle terrain, but I might want to adjust my route a little bit because I'm getting into some, some steeper terrain that might be a, a concern. I want to keep my eyes out in the field as well because what I see on the map is not exactly what it is in the field and you want to trust what you see in the field more than what you see in the map. Uh, I can also see that a lot of this track is, is in southerly slopes, southerly aspects, so it's gonna, gonna catch sun on a clear day. And there's actually not a whole lot of tree cover. There's a bit of tree cover, but, but not a lot of tree cover on this whole route. Next, we'll talk about exporting the line that we've just drawn into a GPX file. You can use this file to uh, download an email to yourself for use in the Gaia app in the field. We'll also talk about printing this map into either a paper map or a digital copy as a PDF. Both of them will have a QR code that you can scan into the Avenza app for use in the field. And we'll also cover exporting a KML file for use as a, a project in Google Earth. This lets you lay this line that we've just drawn into a 3D preview of the terrain. Now that we have this line drawn, we want to export it into a GPX file that we can use uh, in the field. So we'll, with the line on the screen, we'll go to export, GPX, and then export here. That drops it into my downloads. And I can take that file in my downloads and email it to myself. And then I'll have it on my phone in the field. Another thing that we can do is print screen. It's also up here in the menu bar at the top. And we can print to PDF. We'll draw a box over the area that we want to print. Sometimes it helps to zoom out of fairways to, to make sure you can easily get your entire line into that, that area that you want to print. There we go, and then generate PDF. Might be a good practice to give you yourselves a little bit of margin in case you wander a little further off your line than you intend. Uh, once you've got this printed, it should look like this. This is another one that I already had done. And you'll find out, you'll find this down at the bottom. This QR code is what you would uh, scan if you wanted to bring this map into Avenza. Once you've exported that KML file, you can import it into Google Earth. What we're looking at here is the desktop version of Google Earth. You can go to File, find the KML file you exported, open that up, and then you'll see it um, in 3D on top of the, the terrain that we're looking at getting into. Here we're, we're flying in on Google Earth into the Bagley Bowl area. And you can see our lines painted right on top of um, the actual terrain from Google Earth. Uh, once you're in Google Earth, you can, you can drag the view around and get different perspectives. It might help with identifying cliffs, um, different terrain features. It might help you identify gullies that you might pass through or, or areas that you might be exposed to. Um, it might also help you identify some landmarks that you might, might help navigate within the field. That wraps up our lesson on Caltapo. I encourage everyone to, to practice with it, get out in the field and look around and see if the field actually, if the mountains are what you expected based on what you're looking at on the map and on Google Earth. And once you get eyes on the, on the terrain in the field, get back on, on your computer and look at it again on the map and see if it matches what you're expecting. That's how we, we can debrief our day and we can roll that into improving our plan the next time as well.